And let me start by quoting from a review of this novel, Atlas Shrugged, that appeared in Newsweek. It said that you are out to destroy almost every edifice in the contemporary American way of life, our Judeo-Christian religion, our modified government-regulated capitalism, our rule by the majority will. Other reviews have said that you scorn churches and the concept of God. Are these accurate criticisms? Uh, yes. There are few people in American politics who have left such an indelible mark on society the way Ayn Rand has. To this day, sales of her books number in the hundreds of thousands each and every year. Just the simple mention of Rand's name can spark outrage and heated debate amongst those who value altruism above all else. Rand's view that selfishness is a virtue is often seen as perverse, perhaps even evil. But for every person who abhors Ayn Rand, there is someone who adores her, who holds her opinion in the highest esteem imaginable. Over the years, there has been no shortage of people who've uttered the phrase, I read The Fountainhead, and it changed my life. And it would be impossible to ignore Rand's influence, often touted by the likes of Mark Cuban or Secretary of State Rex Tillerson. And yet, for such an important figure in American politics, so few people seem to truly grasp Rand's ideology. If objectivism, Rand's philosophy, could be broken down into two words, it would be rational selfishness. Emphasis on the rational. To quote the Fountainhead, the first right on earth is the right of the ego. Man's first duty is to himself. And it's important to understand where this claim comes from. Contrary to philosophers like Kant, who Rand considers evil, objectivism holds that reality is real, that the world around us exists independently of how we think, feel, or wish to perceive it. The earth is round, the sky is blue, Chick-fil-A is closed on Sundays. These are all facts, whether we like it or not. And man's means of perceiving this objective reality is his mind, his reason. To quote Rand herself, reason is man's only means of perceiving reality, his only source of knowledge, his only guide to action, and his basic means of survival. And because man's mind, his reason, are tools of the individual, not the collective, it only follows that the primary unit of ethics would be the individual. And this focus on the individual is central to Rand's philosophy. Objectivism holds that man is an end in himself. As Gail Winan said in The Fountainhead, I do not cry like the men of my age, but what was the use and the meaning I was the use and the meaning. I, Gail Winand, that I lived and that I acted. Man's values, his ideas, his beliefs all stem from his individual reason. And for Rand, the highest duty man has is to act in accordance with his own values. Now, Rand is often criticized on the basis of her philosophy creating a zero-sum game, a dog-eat-dog -dog world where in order for one person to gain, another must lose. This is illustrated in the video game Bioshock. I built a city where the artist would not fear the censor, where the great would not be constrained by the small, where the scientist would not be bound by petty morality. I chose to build rapture. Andrew Ryan, the character you just heard, is the voice of Rand's philosophy in the game. He strikes out on his own to create Rapture, a city where man is free to pursue his ambitions without anything to hold him back. As you can imagine, things quickly turn to shit. The powerful men in the city turn against each other, and a completely unregulated drug market creates legions of violent drug addicts who tear the city apart. The implication being that this nightmare is what Rand's philosophy leads to in practice. However, this is in many ways a perversion of Rand's beliefs, and represents more of an anarchist utopia than an objectivist one. Objectivism has an inherent morality and also allows for a degree of government regulation, both of which are absent in Rapture. This again goes back to the individual being the moral unit and having innate rights. The violence acted out by the splicers infringed upon these rights, and as an instance, objectivists agree 
the government must intervene. Furthermore, this idea that man will not be bound by petty morality is not an objectivist one. As Howard Rourke, the Andrew Ryan equivalent in Rand's own work says, a man's moral obligation is to do what he wishes, provided his wish does not depend primarily on other men. He then goes on to say, I recognize no obligations toward men except one, to respect their freedom. In objectivism, the morally right thing to do is not to take advantage of one another, as these are not actions of the individual, but actions dependent on another. The world Rand envisions is a positive sum game, where individuals cooperate in mutual self-interest, do not infringe on individual rights, and do not depend on the sacrifice of another individual. But there is another possible flaw in Rand's philosophy that carries a bit more weight. Objectivism depends on the existence of free will, that man is a reasoning and rational being capable of making choices. The topic of free will would be too big to cover in this video, but suffice it to say that there are many reasons to suggest that free will may be nothing more than an illusion. Prominent thinkers like Sam Harris believe the scientific community will inevitably come out in unanimous support of the notion that free will does not exist. Should there ever be a time where this happens, where the evidence against free will is too great, the foundation of objectivism would be destroyed and the entire philosophy along with it. Foregoing the potential issues with objectivism for a moment, let's talk about what this philosophy means in practice. Politics are a key component to Rand's philosophy, one of the five pillars of objectivism. And the ideal system for objectivists is laissez-faire capitalism, a system where there is a complete separation of state and economics in the same way and for the same reasons as the separation of state and church. The only role for the government is to protect the rights of individuals and nothing more. The general belief among laissez-faire capitalists is that individual actors acting in cooperation with each other will seek to benefit themselves and as a consequence, benefit the system as a whole. Now let's talk about a more extreme scenario within the context of objectivism. Philosophers love to discuss the thought experiment of the drowning child. You're walking down the street on your way to work, drinking your daily cup of coffee, and out of the corner of your eye, you see a child drowning. What do you do? And more importantly, what are you morally obligated to do? I think for most of us, our instinct would be to save the child. And indeed, that is what many philosophers, such as Kant or Peter Singer, would argue. It is morally right to save the child and morally wrong to do nothing. Rand, however, has a different perspective. In objectivism, there is nothing wrong with helping people. Charity, acts of kindness, exchanging Christmas gifts, these things are all perfectly okay if they are in accordance with your values. What objectivism rejects is that you are in any way obligated to do any of these things. Again, this stems from the individual being the moral unit. In objectivism, there is no inherent indebtedness between individuals. And this extends to the drowning child as well. You can choose to save the child, or you cannot. You are not morally bound one way or the other. In short, Rand's philosophy is complex, and undoubtedly many of you will reject it out of hand. The idea of selfishness being a virtue and the complete rejection of man having a duty to his fellow man is a difficult pill for most people to swallow. But there's one aspect of Rand's philosophy that I think we can all get behind. Reason. Today we live in a world ruled by emotion, where people are judged not by the merits of their ideas or the content of their character, but by the way that we make other people feel. And I think if we instead started to embrace reason as the highest ideal, the world might just be a better place. Hey guys, let me know what you think of Rand's philosophy in the comments below or over on Twitter. I'm at Gray Winsler. You can also check out more videos over here. Don't know which ones I'm gonna post. 
probably have something to do with Trump since that's what most of my videos are about. Uh, but anyway, guys, that's it. Oh, you can also subscribe. If you click my face below, you can subscribe. You should really already be subscribed. I don't know what you're waiting for. Anyway, guys, I hope you have an awesome weekend. And until next time, let's make YouTube great again.